Okay, right now, as I'm recording this audio, the game isn't even over yet. Cole Caulfield just scored to bring the Habs within three. And what I wanted to talk about in this game, or not in this game, in this video, excuse me, was not really about the Montreal Canadiens game against the Rangers, wherein they're currently down 7-4, so I'm going to assume they're going to lose because there's like, what, nine minutes left? They're not going to win, but if they do, I look like the ultimate fool here. What I wanted to talk about in this video was the tank. Because when it comes to the Montreal Canadiens fan base, I feel like there's a really weird sort of dichotomy with where we can react to certain things in certain games. The Montreal Canadiens right now are not in a playoff spot, and assuming they lose this game against New York, they're not going to be anywhere closer to a playoff spot after tonight. This team, for all intents and purposes, is probably in a position to maybe sell off some of their guys. We've seen a lot of trade rumors involving some of the defensemen on this team. David Savard has been tossed around there. Jake Allen, we could talk about him. We have talked about him quite a bit. And so, of course, when it comes to a trade, if you're trading away David Savard, for example, you're making the team worse on paper. But it's all for the benefit of the future because you're probably going to see the Canadians get some sort of a draft pick or some sort of a prospect in return. The entire idea of building the youth for the future is still intact. And so, when you see a game like this against the New York Rangers where you have goals from Jake Evans, firstly... You also then get goals after the New York onslaught from guys like Cole Caulfield and Yuri Slavkovsky. Caulfield has two goals and an assist at the time of me recording this audio. Slavkovsky has a goal and one assist. Meanwhile, Nick Suzuki has gone out there with a power play marker on Cole Caulfield's deflected shot. This is a game where you're seeing the goals coming from all the guys that you want to see the goals coming from. And no, we're not talking about the Canadians of yesteryear like the Brendan Gallagher's or the Yoel Armia's. These guys, Caulfield, Suzuki, and Slavkovsky, much to the dismay of my fantasy matchup this week because I am playing the guy who has two of them, they've been fantastic. Oh my goodness, you talk about a lot of these points, you talk about a lot of the goals, you talk about the plays, they're playing with confidence, they're playing with swagger, and now you're seeing these pucks going in? Yuri Slavkovsky is finally taking shots, they're finally going in. He's getting some great chemistry with Suzuki, Caulfield, Mike Matheson, of course, is getting involved in the offense too with his power play assist on the shot, which ended up in the Caulfield goal. And then, of course, the... Second Caulfield goal of the night, the shot assisted by Slavkovsky and Gooley, so even more young guys coming into fruition. Even though the Canadians are losing this game, and they're probably going to lose it, I feel like the best part about watching this progress is the fact that a lot of this offense is really coming from the only guys that people want to see develop into long-term studs. Sure, you could say there's more to be desired. Sure, you could say, oh, I'd like to see Newhook get a goal once in a while. I'd like to see more production out of a Jake Evans or a Josh Waugh, but hey... These are learning games. Joshua's a minus three in this one. The Rangers have been all over the Canadians. You could say that the goaltending has been kind of the problem in this one, but uh, yeah, I don't want to pull the plug on Samuel Montembeau just yet. I know a lot of Canadians fans have started to do that, but my point in making this entire video about the tank and about the young guys is this. Is this not best case scenario? Is this not something to be thrilled by? Is this progression not something to be happy with? Because when I think about teams losing games and their fans still being happy about those games, my mind immediately jumps to the Washington Capitals. That fan base has not had too much to cheer about when it comes to their on-ice win-loss results. But they've been happy every game because Alex Ovechkin has started to score. You look at the post-game threads, you look at all the responses on Instagram comments and Twitter replies from Washington Capitals fans. Hey, we lost, but who cares? Alex Ovechkin got a goal, so I'm going to sleep a happy camper. And is it not the same thing here with the Montreal Canadiens at this point? Because I think we're all sort of in that territory now. We know the Habs are not going to make the playoffs. They're so far out of it, they'd have to go on a crazy run to even force themselves into the conversation. The goaltending has not been too significant this year because even the number one guy, Sammy Montembeau, he can still have a night like this where he's gone out there and allowed all the goals. You could very well say that part of this is on Martin St. Louis for not pulling Montembeau at the time of recording this audio. He's still in. He's let in all seven goals so far. So... 
there's a lot of inconsistency with this team. I don't think anybody's really expecting them to be a playoff contender or a cup challenger favorite at this point. So why not just go out there and celebrate the dubs, right? Fewer points in the standings means a higher chance at Macklin Celebrini, but whilst the team is getting those fewer points, you're getting goals from the guys you want to see goals from. Would it not be more and more beneficial to see Slavkovsky, Caulfield, and Suzuki exhibit this chemistry now rather than into the next few years? These are the formative years of what their chemistry is going to look like, even if they're not on the same line for the next 10 years or whatever. Just being on the same power play, just acknowledging how the ebbs and flows of their games collide with each other, just being able to differentiate what makes Nick Suzuki an elite playmaker versus what makes some other random bottom six guy that bottom six guy. Like, of course, no disrespect to Brandon Gignac or whatever, but there's more to gain by playing with Suzuki and learning that guy's style because, quite frankly, he's better. So it probably sets a higher standard for the rest of the people he plays with, is it not? So... Heading into the long term, I'm starting to lean more so on that tanking train. And I get it, it could be a little bit tough for Canadians fans to see because we saw the game that happened against the Anaheim Ducks. We know the Montreal Canadiens have it in them to win games, to, in a way, dominate games. We could see Caden Primo get shutouts. We can see Sammy Montembeau make big saves. We can see Jake Allen only win two games since the start of November. We can see the ups and downs, but at the end of the day, if you're walking out of 2023-2024 with more production out of your top guys and your young guys, Caulfield, Suzuki, Slavkovsky, each getting a lot more points, especially as of late, and if you walk out of the season with a higher chance lottery odds of getting Macklin Celebrini, then does that not help you out even more? I think at this point, it should be more so focused on the idea of Team Tank and being happy with the little victories. This is the philosophy that I try to, you know, repeatedly repent over and over again in like 2022, after the playoffs, after the Stanley Cup Finals run, we were like, yeah... Just be happy that Cole Caulfield's here getting these points when he's in the lineup because he was injured for a good chunk of his earlier career, and that Nick Suzuki is still producing points, and look at how Caden Gooley is playing in the WHL, and how Lane Hudson is doing his thing in the NCAA. These were the stories that we ran with. Less of the team, more of the future. And I think now, because of the Canadian state in the standings, especially after a game like this against the New York Rangers, you could very well say that... Canadians fans probably have it in their best interests and their own personal sanity to go back to that mindset. Hey, they lost a game, fine, but Yuri Slavkovsky had a bunch of points in this one. So did Caulfield. This has been such a pattern that now, even if they do squeak out a win or two, you could be happy about that for sure. The Canadians getting experienced wins off of the backs of the guys that they're going to need to help carry them into the future. That's what they need. But a loss, a dud loss like this, okay, that's fine. It gets their chances better for getting a higher draft pick in 2024's NHL entry draft. And if you wanted more coverage about that, hey, I have an entire playlist on this YouTube channel already chronicling the 2024 prospects. Check out the Why I Want series. It's been a very big passion project of mine the past few years. So Montreal Canadiens fans, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you officially on Team Tank? This is the kind of game that is perfect. Regulation loss, multi-point games out of your top guys and the scoring just keeps on coming for the guys that you want to keep scoring thoughts in the comment section below i hope you enjoyed this british Rose 99 and bye